My experience in the last 20 years is really a very fortunate ride with uh, the fact that I'm from Hong Kong. And I think we were really privileged to be able to make films the way we made films in the 80s and 90s when I started the business. When Hong Kong film was at its golden age, being the main supplier for Chinese entertainment, for the Chinese diaspora all over the world. And that's the only reason that we could make movies, because no other filmmaking center in the world has only 7 million population. I also am a very typical Hong Kong person that when you needed to branch out because your resources locally is very limited and you really need to adapt yourself to different environments. And I think that um, being from Hong Kong and also being an immigrant kid who lived in other parts of Asia, namely Thailand and even when I went to college in LA, I have to adapt myself to different environments. I decided to make my first mainland Hong Kong co-production and it was perhaps love. It was set in the mainland with characters that are organically evolved from the film. I've been able to package my film, promote my film in a way where it would look like a big movie that would attract audiences. But inside all these big canvases or package or promotion or star power, it always lies a very small, intimate and personal story within the movie for myself that could enable me to, to have the passion to create and to make it. So I've always been walking that fine line between uh, personal and the commercial. And if you call that the Hong Kong way, which I believe that's also the Hong Kong way to an extent. So from a director that was used to more intimate city romance or comedy, I need to adapt myself. And then I make my movies bigger and bigger by injecting the musical elements into a love story by way of perhaps love. That was my biggest movie then. And then I have to make Warlords, which was really an historical war epic. But at the same time, no matter how big your movie is, deep down it's still a very personal story to me. After I've done Bodyguard and Assassin as a producer, I got to know Donnie Yen very well. And we wanted to work together. Our goal was to really now this time make a movie that is not totally character driven like most of my other movies have always been. And for me, Swordsman is really an experiment on my part as a director to go into the waters that are not very safe myself because I've always been stronger as a storyteller rather than as a camera stylish action director. I switch my hat back as a director instead of a producer. It always helps for you to tread unsafe waters because to me that is the only way that keep me on my toe and keep me insecure and keep me nervous and that's really the only way I could work you know in every every film you try to inject a certain element in it that you've never dealt with before and that gives you a certain edge and certain freshness because you've never done it before, so it's exciting. You might make some mistakes, but at the same time, you do have that passion or that uh, challenge that makes you keep wanting more. And, and I think as a director, that's the only thing that keeps me going. I would still say that Hong Kong is a very special place. I know people moaning and groaning and grumbling about the fact that we're not where we used to be. And I kept telling them that we should count our blessing because this is what we should have always been. Today, even working with China, if you look at history books, it's like never before has any small territory in the south of China been able to influence culturally the whole mainland China or even whole Asia with that kind of impact and power. I think our generation should really count the blessing. And I think that Hong Kong was strategically at a very interesting place in history that combines a lot of elements mm -hmm. that made it so special and the fact that we could make so many movies and our movies were probably the most liberal movies or free movies in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s compared to most other Asian countries with very strict censorship and I think that kind of value is what made Hong Kong in every aspect across the board not just in film or in arts and culture but in 
the nature of being Hong Kong. It's like people say Hong Kong movies like anything goes, you know, you don't have to go by the rules. And, and, and I think that's true to every walks of life in Hong Kong. And I think that is the most precious thing of being Hong Kong and that's something that we should try to preserve. Film art has built up from when we were all very skeptical about the reason for it to exist, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And it's a platform for myself because I do have a sales company and distribution. It's a very good platform to meet international buyers and business partners. It's been doing very well in the last 10 years, I think. It's good to hear that there are a lot of these new exchanges between Hollywood and really more importantly, China. Mm -hmm. And Hong Kong will still probably play the middleman role that we've always played, you know, between China and the rest of the world. The world industry are all looking at China, not really for the Asian content or for the Chinese content. They're really looking at recreating the miracle that, uh, that some of the big blockbuster had in China, like Avatar. I mean, when Avatar did the kind of money it did in China, Hollywood realized for the first time that this is a real potential market. And just like when I finally decided to go to China in 2005 with Perhaps Love, I think Hollywood think that this is the right time.